gentlemen, we got to bring Todd Howard into the conversation because it's an important one. Now, this story I pulled from GameSpot. Now, I'm not a big fan of their work, but they're the ones who did the interview, so I got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, it was uh, an interview with Todd Howard, uh, and it was written by Eddie uh, Mac. Mac- it's M-A-K-U-C-H. Uh, Makuch, I believe that's how you say it. Uh, and Eddie wrote this um, uh, April 11th, 2024. Now, this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is very telling. Uh, and again, some of the things that he said in this are going to break some hearts. Um, I don't necessarily know that now we are on, well, it's tax day, April 15th. Has some ideologies changed for Todd Howard since this initial interview that was posted on the 11th? Maybe. And obviously, this business that we that we enjoy so much in in everything that goes into comics, gaming, toys, statues, models, video games, they all we're all a bunch of nerds, right? We all enjoy this stuff. Well, according to the interview, folks, he uh the lead. Title is Bethesda's Todd Howard responds to the possibility of the Elder Scrolls TV show coming next after Fallout. Could other Bethesda games get spun into TV shows? Now, um, obviously, uh, this is uh, this is coming off of an IGN interview that they have quoted here, where Bethesda boss Todd Howard told IGN that currently there is nothing in the works with regards to other Bethesda franchises being adapted for TV. He's uh, he's talking, he's taking a never say never approach for now, but don't hold your breath for an Elder Scrolls or Starfield TV series. And I'm getting I'm, my heart's breaking as we uh, as we speak. I'm going to read verbatim from that interview. It goes on to say this, folks. Everyone asks, now this is Todd Howard, everyone asks like about Star- Elder Scrolls, and I keep saying no. Um, and I would approach those, uh, and I'll probably say no as well. You never know if someone is going to click. With the Fallout series, uh, Todd Howard said, Bethesda agreed to work with Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy and their Kilter Films company because they thought they could do a high quality job. Todd goes on to say it wasn't forced. It was kind of natural. It, it was kind of a natural relationship. And hey, this sounds really cool. As opposed to we should have a show, right? It never came from that. And this is according to the interview. Um, now it goes on to say uh, Howard c- continues. People have wanted to make a Fallout show ever since we did Fallout Three. I took a lot of meetings and had conversations, and I was always sort of, well, it's not really quite clicking for me. Um, uh, He goes on to say, uh, when Howard met uh, Nolan, however, things changed. Uh, Todd and I had been fans of each other's work for many, many years, says Nolan. Um, So, look, this is one of those deals, Fuzzy, that... um, immediately for me as much as i know there's going to be people in this chat that are screaming to the high heavens about an elder scrolls maybe hbo picks it up and does a game of thrones type of elder scrolls um that would probably be really good for me personally i think tip of the spear in regards to where we go from here obviously a season two of Fallout, which has already been greenlit, but Starfield, man, I mean, a Starfield TV series with the care and love and respect to the material like we just saw through the eight episodes of Fallout season one would be incredible. I don't know who you get to do it. I don't know if you, you know, it, who, who makes it. Is it HBO? Is it Amazon? Is it uh, you know one of the other bigger production companies? Whoever, and I would imagine that uh, that first rights would go to uh, Prime, more specifically Amazon, because of the job that they did with Fallout. But do you feel a bit 
heartbroken that he's already kind of said no to anything else? And, and, and do you think that the success of the show, and it, it is clearly a success. As a matter of fact, there was a, a post from um, uh, Amazon uh, Achievement Unlocked with the power armor going like this, uh, saying it's the number one across the world for Amazon. That, that's a really big deal. Let's talk about it, man. Well, and, and when it comes to Todd Howard, I, I do believe he, he his mindset is that he still wants to focus on games before he steps away, which right. I unfortunately my gut is once Elder Scrolls Six is released, that's probably going to be his swan song at that point. Um, so it, it, he may not be in the picture <laughs> that much longer as far as you know making that ultimate decision considering microsoft ultimately is who owns the ip um but given his involvement with with fallout it would be awesome to see him uh you know work with uh you know amazon again for starfield now i guess the 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 biggest drawback would be overall the cost and i think that's why probably amazon's probably the best one suited because it seems like they are willing to spend any type of budget to make a good film or a good series and show and, and so forth. So not knocking Paramount, not knocking HBO or any of the other ones, but Amazon looks like they're, they're almost like with Microsoft when it comes to the gaming aspect, they're like that. It seems right now when it comes to like streaming services and, and series and stuff, but it, it is a, a little disappointing that he doesn't want to do any more of those IPs from Bethesda but I, I think it's something where he could change his mind towards, uh, you know, finalizing development for Elder Scrolls Six. Um, he could, you know, possibly retire from Bethesda and then, you know, solely focus on being like that go between between Bethesda or Microsoft and those studios where it's like, hey, you know what? I changed my mind because the reason why I said no before is because I had to focus on making these games. Now yeah. I don't worry about the games now i could just you know spew these ideas or or some of the the insight and lore into these other creative works and things like that so i'm i'm hoping he comes around at some point seeing like you said a lot of the the feedback being positive having the the success both on the console as far as people getting back into the game as well as the success on the streaming service itself Maybe, maybe that will influence him. Maybe that will be enough of the, the carrot on the stick for him to be like, you know what? I still got it. Kind of thing. Um, <laughs> when he's deciding to kind of walk away, because like, let, let's be honest, he doesn't need to create any more games to be comfortable the rest of his life after yeah. the purchase of uh, Bethesda or Zenimax and stuff like that. So I, I, I totally assume he'll kind of do like um, the one, uh, lead director did for uh tango game works once you know they finally had like a lot of their games wrapped up and he knew he could kind of hand the torch over to uh his protege to some extent he could kind of walk away like they they convinced him to stay on to kind of finish that and i kind of see uh todd howard doing something similar for elder scrolls i would love for him to stay around for fallout 5 and it, it just feels like if anything comes to this conversation this is you know, something that, uh, you know, on pixelated echoes talking with, um, you know, Randall Thor about it. It's like the, the only miss in all of this fallout, uh, talk and discussion is that we might not see a fallout five for 10 years or, or maybe even longer at this point. Cause there's, yeah, no it's could uh... make it that's readily available at this point to do so. So, but, uh, out, know, out... It's... yeah, no, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say that that's an interesting thought, uh, one of which that I, I know that that is a sentiment. And, and it wasn't the first time that I've heard that conversation. There is something to be said about, OK, so they're finished. They finished building Starfield. It's out. It's a hit. It's a success. They have the DLC Shattered Space releasing this year. All right. We are all thinking that uh, Elder Scrolls, which is the next big one from Todd and potentially his last one uh 2026 is is the rumor uh would be pretty a big deal if that was an exclusive for the uh launch of a new xbox console it would be massive uh and then obviously they do one of these big games at a time they're still supporting starfield where is 
the time and how long would it be? Five years, six years. So are we talking 2032 for the next fallout? I, I mean, again, at this point, I think there may be one of those situations where either they make the studio much bigger and they dedicate a studio team to each one of their big franchises, which would kind of divvy it up a bit and take mm-hmm. off the pressure. And then when one team was done, they would come over and help or reach out to Obsidian. I mean, they said they want to do a new uh, a Fallout New Vegas too, or maybe they do a Fallout New York or a Fallout Texas or a Fallout California. I mean, they, they could do, uh, they, they can go to the other side of the world. A Fallout, I mean, there's a Fallout London uh, mod that's available. I mean, maybe you reach out to Obsidian and say, hey, maybe we can dual studio this. I don't know, I, it, but it's an interesting thought. Yeah, I, I I hope that you know, considering all of the people that have been involved from the beginning of Fallout or uh, under the Microsoft umbrella now. I mean, you have uh, Fargo, who was like the the lead producer when he worked at uh, Interplay over there, running uh, In Exile. Like, if they really even wanted to go back to the old style Fallout, where it was more of like your your turn based type of uh, RPG. They could possibly even have that as like a go between to kind of fill in. Like I know they're working on Clockwork Revolution, but yep. it, it would be a kind of a cool thing considering RTSs and turn based games are making a little bit of a resurgence. Maybe that's the stopgap to kind of you know hold us over until there's a Fallout Five. Have something along those lines. Like maybe they do a remake or a reboot of the Fallout One and Two series uh, in that style. But um, I think holly or or the the blue number uh made mention that you know why not just have a a a little a small team extracted from in exile a small team extracted from obsidian and a small team extracted from the you know uh, bethesda softworks um have all of them make a small team that just focus on fallout and they at least get the the ball going or get the the foundation stuff started and as what do you call them as uh, elder scroll six is wrapped up everybody kind of shifts gears and then they already have a good bit of the the foundation already started so it's it's like they can hit the ground running and not have as much of a, a lull in between type of thing but any way you look at it i still would love for todd to kind of green light or, or somebody to green light a starfield um um uh, uh tv series like there's there's not enough sci-fi shows out there. Sure, you got Star Wars and Star Trek. Uh, I know a lot of people would love to have a Mass Effect, uh, you know, series out oh there as my well. God, yes, but uh, Starfield, I think, it, considering EA doesn't seem to treat uh, the Mass Effect IP as as great as they probably should, <laughs> uh, I, I think we we stand a better chance of seeing a Starfield uh, show or movie. Uh, than than Mass Effect, and I'm I'd be all for that because I love that game. I mean, there there is something to be said about that, um, and that's why we're having this conversation because I think Amsley, uh, it, the the writing is right there, right? Like obviously, many of the Fallout games that are seeing this massive resurgence are simply because of non gamer interest as well as gamer interest, obviously. We're as gamers always interested to get that transmedia correlation, right? It's easy for us. We see it. We 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 go we go towards it, and we start playing games that we haven't played in years. But there's something to be said about the normies, the casual audience that are going to find this show and be like, "Whoa, this this is based on a game. I'm going to go check that out." Whether they play on their PS4, their PS5 their PC, or any of their Xbox consoles, these games are going to see new audience. Now, what's interesting about the Starfield conversation is the fact that the game came out, it did very well across two platforms. It's only available on Xbox and PC. How long that is, well, we don't know. But it is an exclusive right now. Now, it would take years for them to obviously puts pen to paper and get the you know the script written and, and start doing the work on starfield but man the same resurgence that you saw with games that are years old in fallout 3 
Fallout 4, Fallout 76, a newer one. And of course, we're now we're starting to see some traction with Fallout New Vegas by Obsidian. A Starfield show would be killer. I, I, I like I said, I'm 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 not disappointed in Todd. He's he's only one man and he's working on Indiana Jones to make sure that's perfect. And then I think that his magnum opus, if you will, kind of like what Fuzzy said, is going to be, of course, the Elder Scrolls Six. And I honestly think that that is it after that. But maybe I'm wrong. I'd like to see him stay on for Fallout. It's just Fallout seems so far away. If you're going to do a TV show based on your IPs, and I think Starfield is the one. What about you, Gamsley? Um, okay, so for, I, I think he said, you know, never say never. Uh, that's always leaving doors open. Um, I think this is going to speak volumes uh, to, like, how he sees that environment. Um, there's going to be way more Fallout shows, so he's going to be involved in those. You, you could probably bet on it. that it, it You said it's green light for season two, I think, right, Fallout? Yes, they have already greenlit season two, correct? Yeah. Uh, as for, like, using that to service some of their games, I mean, it doesn't really... The timing doesn't really matter. I know you brought up Rand's conversation with you, uh, Fuzzy, um, that, like, they should have timed it a little bit better. That stuff's always tricky, but that's why seasons exist. You know, season one, two, three, four, five. There's probably going to be three, four seasons if they could keep this, like cadence open and the 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 director love it uh, loves it enough to keep going and todd is having a lot of fun with it i think this goes to three seasons and and in that timeline no matter when it drops we'll sell a game it doesn't really matter when it drops we saw it with the last of us doesn't really matter they didn't have a new last of us game it boosted the sales you know uh you don't need to time a new game with it um it's just not necessary and it's truly like almost impossible to time it um and also, like, it doesn't even have to be that good, right? We saw it with The Witcher 3. I mean, the first season of The Witcher 3 was not exceptional, and it sold Witcher 3 games. It's just all about the right actors, the right cast, the right directors, I mean, with a passion. And I think if Todd finds another director to that is passionate about his work, um, as he's passionate about theirs, um, I think he'll jump on it, you know? Um, I don't think age is necessarily or retirement will stop him. I think if the right person falls right at their feet, he'll take it and they'll do it. Uh, we saw it with the Halo show that forcing the things are probably not the best idea and have the opposite effect. Um, so yeah, let's let's see what happens. Uh, Starfield, uh, the Starfield question. I would say Starfield is probably right after Halo, probably the most interesting because it's grounded in some sort of rules that you could abide by and follow, and that makes intrigue even better and the mystery even better. Um, so yeah, Starfield would be one of those one of those games I'd love to see an adaption for, even though in my opinion it has pretty solid competition. Uh, I forgot some of the names, but there's a lot of good, strong sci-fi going right now. Uh, same with Elder Scrolls. I mean, it's a tough environment with Game of Thrones out there, you know. But again, Witcher 3 did good, so what am I even talking about? Um, I mean, Witcher, not Witcher 3. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I um, exactly. I mean, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think we're going to see something, but I think Fallout's going to go long. I think Fallout's going to go the longest, and that's all we really need, to be honest. I don't, I don't need the other two, to be quite honest. It, if they come out and there's the right people for it, cool. But I'm with Tom, uh, Todd on this. I'm like, ah, if it comes, it comes, and the door's open, and if not, whatever. You know, I mean, listen, it's 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 a fine point across the board. Uh, listen, uh, Game Pass Dad, before I bring you in, let me just catch the last couple of Super Chats over here. We have some more additional generosity from Andre Doyle. He drops two additional Super Chats. The first one of $2. He says, Gears movie is being done by the Dune Films writer. Yes, that is absolutely correct. And he goes on to say in his second $5 Super Chat, Gears film is set to launch on Netflix with Dune writers attached 
Uh, Jason Momoa and Jack Black and others have just wrapped filming on the Minecraft film Amazing Things. Yes, yeah, another one that's going to be. I think pretty much anything with Jack Black is going to is going to sell. Uh, I don't know what the Minecraft movie is going to actually look and be about, and it is an odd combination when you consider um, that Jack Black is a part of it along with Jason Momoa. I don't know if it's live action or it's animated, kind of like Super Mario uh, the the film. If it's animated, then it's going to be fantastic because they're going to voice the characters, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but again, more more exposure to Xbox, more exposure to Microsoft because obviously they own the Minecraft IP. Uh, and uh, it's 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 it, put it this way: it's, it's very exciting. Uh, I think that again, all of this uh, transmedia poly- pollinization that you're seeing happen. For Xbox, you know, they, they have their hands in a lot of pies, uh, Game Pass, Dad. And you know something real quick? I have a comment here from, let me find it, because it was actually really, really good. It was from Nico from BR. He says, the animated Starfield did look fire, you can't lie. And you know something? We keep saying TV series, we keep saying film, but what if they Animation. did an anime? You know what I'm saying? Mm. I think yeah. that would be freaking dope and here's the thing it's it's much easier to do animation i'm not saying that it's an easy job i'm saying it's easier to do animation as opposed to cg and doing an actual film and or a a series we've seen a ton of really good animation and animation adaptations specifically on netflix who is by the way doing a gears anime I think that this would be a brilliant way to bring this franchise to so many people because anime is huge. What are your thoughts on that? That's a great point, Nico. Thanks so much for the idea. I think that would be a great way to bridge the gap. Like, honestly, like similar to what I said previously about uh, like Last of Us and like Fallout, like affecting those games, like Cyberpunk with Edge Runners, like oh, yes. a gigantic, like I can't believe I didn't think of it, but yeah, that brought a gigantic reinvigoration to that world. And that was downright uh, absolutely an amazing in and of itself. Like, I honestly, it's like I'm not usually really big on like rewatching like TV shows right away or movies necessarily, unless like they're really good. Um, but like Edge Runners is one that I've watched at least twice um, all the way through. And I, I what was am the MOBA of- one also that everyone said was amazing. It was a MOBA uh, that game was it, that was it Dota? I don't think I've. Paid attention to that one. No, the uh, Arcane League of Legends. Arcane, oh, that's it. Yeah. Arcane, yes. probably one of the best shows. Yeah. Period. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Might have to there check it out. But no, I I think that's definitely if because like you're saying, like to bring the set pieces to life to get get all the actors and like the logistics of just creating a live action adaptation. Um, yeah, it's got to be somewhat easier in some respects to just like build a world in an in like an animated version because yeah the starfield like animations they made were really quite amazing i think that showed a lot of promise and like they've done it before with halo also and told like some great stories in that per- in that respect also so i would i would be all for it like i i definitely over the last couple of years have gotten more into anime as i've gotten older and not really cared about what anyone else thinks about what you're watching or what you enjoy but um it's it's also kind of i feel like matured as an art form and like become more prevalent in the united states like as a as an art form and it really is like an enjoyable way to enjoy a story um and i i feel like that could be a lot easier to adapt these other things because of course we we all would love to see it we all want to see more of the things that we love and like basically because not only is it us being able to spend more time in those worlds and also um brings more because basically like as these um properties do well in these other media forms it it brings more players into the into the fold with us enjoying the things that we love but it also adds more more money to the war chest for them to bring like fallout 5 and like these other games and put more effort into everything and bigger budgets and things like that which i don't necessarily think bigger budgets are always a better thing but it just gives more incentive for the powers that be to basically give us more experiences and i do think the idea um which i feel like kind of like seeing seeing a game like hell divers like take its genre 
and create a game that we totally could have gotten from the Halo universe. Like, I do hope we see more of those mid-level adaptations, like we're talking about Fallout and things like that, where we explore different types of games in these universes that we already love now that Microsoft has all these studios. Like, there, there's definitely logistical reasons why we can't just have everything, but it would certainly be nice to, like, explore. Like, we don't just want one type of game from universes that we love. Like, all of us, like, I'm sure all of us have at least three or four different game, like, game genres that we enjoy like for me it's like racing games shooters rpgs like those are usually some of my favorites and i would i i play everything across the board and i know i'm not alone with alone in that so i i do hope that we see more of that through like the success of like the transmedia approach and like the the power that that brings like but yeah uh starfield or any other microsoft property anime i definitely uh i definitely would be excited for that <laughs> I think there's a lot to be said about uh, continuing and using the power of these IPs to bring new forms of media to both old fans, which, of course, there are a lot of old fans, but that's not the point of these things. They're the right. new fans, right? They, well, they, want to, uh, they, want to, they want to attract newer eyes on IPs, and the best way to do it is through something like TV, like film, like anime. And... Of course, I would add that I would like it to be situations like this where it adds to the experience, not just doing it to do it kind of like the Call of Duty approach where no matter what, you're getting a game every single year because it prints money and there's no reason not to. And they kind of lose scope or like kind of like Destiny where they don't want to over deliver things like these projects that people are like the people creating them are passionate about like that's that's what i'm all for and yeah. i i do feel like todd howard like in the interviews he said that with fallout itself he said no uh, every single time to almost everybody because people just approached him wanting to do it but when he had the right group of people coming to him that are fans of the project that were going to do it justice that he believed in he was more than happy to jump in so i would hope that those are the types of teams that are brought together in order to to do these sorts of things and that it doesn't just become like that mindless cash grab that degrades the brand overall which i i do feel like we're getting to a point where uh it does seem like microsoft is working on the quality of things and um we all we all have seen what happens when capitalism does kick into high gear but i i have faith that we're we're heading in a good direction with with like the type of effort being put into these projects I mean, I do. I mean, you can. The quality is there, right? Yeah, the yeah. The care, the respect, uh, and and again, I, I think if you look back to what happened with the Halo season one, right, uh, the way that those directors and producers talked about the Halo series is why they were all fired. Uh, they <laughs> they came out very. They, I mean, listen, the guy. The, sorry, you know, they came out and they were very bullish about. No, we never we didn't want to be bothered with the games. We didn't want to be bothered with the lore. You know, some of them didn't even play the game. How are you directing this film? If you did, right. you know, how are you writing the, for this franchise if you've never played the game? That is completely removed from the second season. Second season is like god tier so much better. I mean, yeah, it, it is it perfect? No. But there are some really amazing epic things in that show. Got some, it definitely gets you excited as a Halo fan for season three to see where they're gonna go. Right. But uh, you know, I mean, and we'll, if, we'll see. What, yeah, please if they, continue. If they really execute though, too, like imagine imagine where like Halo Infinite could be. Cause I mean, Halo Infinite really is in a pretty amazing spot. Um, but just with like the same thing happened to the team that launched halo infinite like a lot of those people aren't really around anymore yeah, like they've they're all gone they've really yep. shifted like i do miss kind of like the the narrative uh idea that they had there and it'll be interesting to where see where halo goes but i kind of feel like uh there's a lot of factors that went into it like covid and otherwise that um caused us to get the game that we got and the release that we had um, but ultimately it is in a really good spot but imagine if the first season of halo released at this level like that fallout set like the type of impact that could have with bringing people back to the fold playing the games enjoying it like i i really as a halo fan would love to see that get its chance to expand further than just the 
because I do feel like it is growing, but there's still just like a really core group of gamers that still play that. So I, yeah. I just, that's, that's my main concern, but I, I definitely have faith that, the care is there, the quality's there, and that they're they're working towards it. And on your recommendation, I'm definitely going to give season two a shot for sure. Yeah.